Hello, friends, and thank you for joining me in another episode of Pinstack Smashing. I'm your host and favorite YouTube lockpicker, Master Yale Quickset. Now, in this episode, we're going to be analyzing and decoding the Master Lock Model 653D. Now, this is only the second lock that I have decoded, so I'm going to share with you how I was able to decode it. And I'm also going to be sharing a link with you so that you can download software that I wrote that will help you decode your Master Lock 653D. So taking a look at the lock and the packaging, as usual, the lock is touted to be tough under fire. The Model 653D, and there are now four wheels that we can set and reset for our own combination. Each wheel, again, has 10 possibilities, 0 through 9, 0 through 9, 0 through 9, 0 through 9, and this yields 10 to the fourth power, which is 10,000 different permutations. Master has rated this lock a number 4 on the Master Hard Scale. If we flip this over to the back, we can see that there's no additional information about the lock, except that the lock body itself is 51 millimeters. Now this lock does in fact have a hardened steel shackle, which the 647D did not. And this lock ran about $10.99 at my local Target. This packaging actually has a second blister for another massive anti-theft device. All of the text that we see up here that's in English simply tells you how to set and reset the combination for this particular lock. Okay, so to decode this lock, I'm going to be using two tools. The first one's going to be a simple shim from Sparrows with a giant rubber handle. And the second thing I'm going to be using is a simple piece of software that I wrote, which I will be sharing through my GitHub page via Weeknet Labs. This piece of software is simply set up in the same way that we have the lock in the vise currently. Wheel 4 is on the far left, and wheel 1 is on the far right. As we're decoding the lock, each wheel is going to have two clicks. Each click is going to happen in between a number. So all we have to do is simply start with wheel four and turn the wheel until we feel a click and then mark down in between what two numbers this happened. For instance, the first one, say it happens between zero and nine, a blue number four has shown up in the user interface and that simply means that the fourth wheel could possibly be a number four. Now we repeat the process and we get say a click between two and three. We can see that now a number seven has shown up and we're done with wheel four. So essentially we break it down the permutations from 10,000 permutations down to only 16, which is two per wheel. Two to the fourth power is obviously 16. Once we're done repeating this process for each wheel, we can hit this blue show combinations button at the bottom and all 16 combinations will be printed out via JavaScript loop that I wrote. Again, this software will be free on my GitHub page via Weeknet Labs. I'll place a link in the description for this software. Okay, so the first step that I found to decoding this lock is to simply find the two clicks per wheel. And to do so, I'm going to be sticking the shim directly down inside of this window to which the wheel protrudes, and the back of the shim is going to be rested against the back of the window on the metal part of the lock case itself. I'm going to keep the shim as perpendicular to the lock as possible, and I'm going to apply downwards force very gently and turn the wheel counterclockwise until I feel a click. Again, I'm going to be doing this twice per wheel, and each time I'm going to be entering the result into the user interface of the software that I just showed. Okay, so let's begin the process by finding our first click on wheel number four. Again, I'm turning this counterclockwise until I feel a click downwards. There we go. The first click downwards happened between the numbers 4 and 5. So next we're going to enter that into the software by simply selecting 4 pipe 5 here at the bottom. And this means that the first number could be a number 9. Okay, so we're going to repeat the process until we find a second click. Ah, there we go. This one happened between the numbers 0 and 9. So let's enter that into the software. And now we have decoded the two possibilities for wheel number 4, 9 or 4. So we're going to continue this process for each wheel, and once done, we simply hit the show combinations, and we test each combination in hopes that the lock will in fact pop open.
Okay, so now that we are done for each wheel, the zero does not show up as blue, by the way, on wheel number three. We simply hit the show combinations button and JavaScript will spit out all possible combinations for this lock. So now all we have to do is try each combination in hopes that the lock will in fact pop open. We will start with 6809 and work our way down to the very last number which is 1454. Again these numbers are shown in reverse order simply because the first number on the left, 6 in the first case, is pertaining to wheel 1. We have the lock backwards in our vise right now just because I found that it's easiest to pick each wheel with the lock upside down. Okay, so let's just simply dive in and try each number. The first number is 6809. I have the lock set to 9086. So we'll do 6, 8, 0, 9. And that did not open the lock. The next number is 6804. That does not open the lock. We have the next number 6859. And look at that. So using this decoding method, we have broken the amount of permutations down from 10,000 to only 16. Imagine that, from 10,000 only to 16. That means that there's a 99.8% compromise in the security of the combination system of this lock. Now combine that with the fact that people will choose 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 1, 1, 1, and a lot of other seemingly simple combinations. This is a very insecure lock. Now this was kind of an extensive process if you think about it. I had to pick each wheel twice. And also on top of that I had to enter each result into a piece of software. Now if this lock is used somewhere in storage lockers or somewhere in an airport on luggage or something like that, I think that would be okay simply because there are cameras there to help protect against non-repudiation. Obviously you would see somebody picking this lock. Hopefully somebody in public would see someone trying to pick this lock using this method and report this to the authorities. So thank you for joining me, friends, in this episode of Pinstack Smashing. I'm your host and favorite YouTube lock picker, Master Yale Quickset. I hope that you have a good evening. Good night, friends.